Okay, we've left off halfway through our bank reconciliation problem. Let's pick up with the second half. We've gone through the left-hand side of our bank rec saying, here's what the bank thinks our cash is, but here's what the bank's missing. And it's typically going to be outstanding checks, those checks that haven't been cashed yet or haven't appeared on our bank statement yet, and outstanding deposits or deposit in transit, those de deposits that haven't appeared on our bank statement yet. Now we've got to go the other way. We've got to say, what's on the bank statement that we've missed in our cash T account? What's on the bank statement that I haven't recorded yet on my books? So the right hand side of this page is all about here's what we think cash is, 5269, and here's why we're wrong. So let's go back to the problem. So we just go the opposite way. With the the um uh, the bank side, we just click, went down our cash T account. We said, here's everything the bank's missing. And it was those three items that are circled. And there's the little star item we'll have to worry about now. Uh, on Going the other way, we're just going to have to look at everything on the bank statement that hasn't been accounted for yet in our cash T account. And basically, it's everything I haven't checked off yet. But we can kind of work backwards. I say 5,500, yes, that still matches. 1,450, you can look up and see it still matches. 832, you can see that still matches. NSF check, B. Smith, 750. That's an amount that appears on my bank statement. But as I scroll up, I don't see it anywhere on my cash T account. So I'm going to have to worry about that. The 983 versus 839 issue, I want to deal with at the end because it's so weird and it's tricky. Um, so we'll just save that for the very last thing we do. Continuing to scroll down, everything else is matching until I get to this bank collection 1450. There's an asterisk beside it that says the bank collection on March 23rd was the collection of a note receivable from K. Murphy and represents principal of 1400 and interest of 50 bucks. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we'll deal with that. Uh, in its time. Uh, check 70, check 71, both were fine. And then there's a banking plan fee, basically a service charge of 30 bucks, and we earned five whole dollars of interest. So these are all items that the bank has recorded, the ones that are circled on the bank statement, that we haven't recorded yet in our cash T account. You'll see that these are numbers are nowhere to be found in our cash T account. They're items that are outstanding. And you may say to yourself, well, wait, there's 1450 in our cash T account. Yes, and we've caught that deposit. So yeah, there's two 1450s. We've only got one in our cash T account. So this item is, is something we missed. So let's go ahead and record those onto our bank reconciliation. These four missing items, and then we'll deal with that weird 983 issue at the last. So the first one is the NSF check from B. Smith. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to say NSF check B. Smith and that NSF check was for 750 bucks. So let's put that in over here, $750. Now, I've got to ask myself with every one of these, when I find out about the NSF check, or whatever item I'm looking at, is that good for my money or bad for my money? And the answer is, if somebody gives me a check, and remember NSF stands for non-sufficient funds, basically this B. Smith guy gave us a $750 check, he didn't have the money to cover it, the check bounced, this is bad for my money. So I'm going to put it in brackets because it hurts my cash balance. My cash is going down as a result of this guy bouncing a check money. Um, oops, I always go the wrong way there. Uh, the next circled item uh, is this bank collection for 1450. Remember what we said about bank collections. The bank can collect money on our behalf, and if the bank collects money on our behalf, that's good for our money. So I'm just going to say bank collection, and it's a plus 1450. I don't need to put it in brackets. That's great news for my money. Next up, banking plan fee, 30 bucks. I'll call that a service charge. It's a $30 service charge. And it's 30 bucks. And of course, that is bad news for our money. Uh, the next item oh, on the list is the $5 of interest. I'm going to call that interest revenue because that's what it is. It's, it's interest income. It's, it's good news. 
and it's only five dollars of good news but it helps my cash it doesn't hurt my cash it helps so the last item we need to look at before our bank rack is complete we did kind of the easy stuff now the hard one this 983 and 839 I just want to read the issue again and I'll zoom in a bit closer here Oop, not that close sheesh what's going on here uh, let me go to there that's better um, so that check 64, I have it underlined in red there, the, the two asterisks item. Uh, it says a payment on account was incorrectly recorded as 839 on Ned's books. In other words, our account recorded credit cash 839. The correct amount of the check was recorded by the bank, 983. So here's what we did. We went credit cash 839. We should have, this is what we did, we should have gone uh, credit cash, what did the bank do? 983. So let's figure out the difference here. We, we messed up. What's the difference? We went credit cash 839. We should have gone credit cash 983. The difference is 144 bucks. We're 144 dollars apart from what we did to what we should have done. So my question is, how do I fix it? I went credit cash 839. I should have gone credit cash 983. I'm 144 bucks off. What's my uh, solution here? My solution is, well, I either have to debit cash or credit cash to fix it. The answer, I've got, I guess I've got to ask myself is, did I credit cash enough or did I credit cash too much here? We didn't credit cash enough. We didn't credit cash enough. So to solve this problem, I've got to credit my cash 144 bucks more. I'm 144 bucks short in terms of my credits to cash. Now let's go back to our bank rack. What this is telling me, and this is the bookkeeper's error, this is the accountant's error, I'll call it a bookkeeper's error, we could call it an accountant's error. Our accountant made a mistake. They didn't credit cash by $144 enough. In other words, to fix it, we need cash to go down by $144. We need to be crediting our cash $144. I know that was a mouthful. I know that's a bit tricky. I hope you'll rewind and kind of rewatch and, and get your head around that part. Okay, so now we have a list to add up, and I think what you're going to find is when we add our list, we're going to end up bang on 5,800. Let me just pull out the calculator tool in Excel here. Calc. Hopefully none of my software is embarrassing. Let me see. Download StarCraft Poker Star. Oh, you can see I'm a de degenerate. I opened the wrong program to uh, Calc. There we go. If you just type in calc, you'll get a calculator. So let's add up our list here. 5269 minus 750 plus 1450 minus 30 plus 5 minus 144 equals 5,800. So let me just write that number at the bottom. But right now, birds are singing, sun is shining, I'm feeling very good, very strong, very powerful. And the reason I'm feeling so good, strong, and powerful is these two numbers match. We call this our reconciling balance. And now as an accountant, you can go, well, yeah, my balances are different, but I'm able to explain them. I understand where my differences come from. Now you might think, all right, if this is a balance sheet, I would do this and I would call it a day. Unfortunately, it's not a balance sheet. We have more work to do. My balance right now, according to my cash T account, is 5269. That's the balance on my cash T account. But I've just said, here's all the things I missed. Here's all the things I'm wrong about. I've got one, two, three, four, five things that I'm my cat my books are off by. Well, the bank's off by those outstanding checks and deposits. The bank's gonna catch up though. Once the person deposits the check or we deposit our money, the bank's gonna figure it out and they're gonna get caught up. On our side of the books though, if we miss a bunch of stuff, it's the accountant's job to get caught up. 
So that's going to be our job. That's going to be our next step. So in the next part of the video, I'm going to walk you through the five journal entries that we require to solve this problem. The five journal entries we require to, to finish this up. Now I have very good news for you. These are the easiest journal entries of introductory accounting. These are the best and easiest journal entries we're going to do all year. So that's going to be in the next part of the video. Please uh, click over to that.